Hi, I'm Daniela Mellon, and I have a fun watercolor workshop for you today, brought to you by Viviva Color Sheets. These beautiful watercolor paints are on a folded paper palette that opens up and is filled with swatches of intense color. Each swatch is a watercolor pigment that you activate with a wet brush. They are lightweight and compact, and yet the colors pack a punch. Today, I have a workshop for you to use these intense colors to paint a fitting illustration, a fancy flamingo. Now you can use any watercolors you have, but if you want hugely pigmented and vivid colors, you may consider a set of these. And it just so happens that Viviva and I have co-branded a set of 16 bold colors that you can purchase following the link below. I'll include a link to another video with more information on how to use this set and how I use the set. But for today, let's get started on this workshop. So you can find the template on my website and I'll include that link below and it's for the line art drawing of this flamingo. So all you do is you download and print it out and then you have a template. You can put it on a light source. I'm using a light pad, but you could use a window, anything with light shining through from the bottom. You put your watercolor paper on top, and then with a very light hand and a pencil, you trace over your image. I'm using a watercolor pencil, but you can use a number two pencil as well. After I have that image done, I want to show you some variations. You can flip the template around and get an opposite image as well when you make your drawing. Once I have my sketch completed, I start by wetting the beak and the body of the bird. I like to start with wet paper so that when I add my color, in this case the cherry blossom color, it'll blend and bleed a little and fade gradually, and that adds a level of interest to the piece. I'll take a little more of whatever's on my brush on my palette, incorporate a little water, and that fades the color even more, so that when I go and add that light color to my painting, it adds another level of interest. I'll clean off my brush and then I'll come back in and wet my piece one more time. I'm wetting the body completely. So I'll go around the bottom and thoroughly wet the body and the tail feathers. From here, I'll take some more of that cherry blossom color and I'll start to carve out the different pieces, the wing and the edges of the body. And this makes a nice shape. Then I'll take some of that orange color from the palette, which is a saffron, and I'll start to color the legs. It's a very small area, so I don't have too much pigment on my brush, but I want to color in those legs. I'll come back in with some vivid red here, which is a nice, deep, saturated color, and I'll start to carve out different spots on the bird, and this adds a definite level of interest and draws the eye around the bird. I'll take a little more of that saffron color and add some orange spots right on top of the feathers. And when they blend with the reds and the pinks, they turn kind of a peach color. I'm taking some ocean blue here, wetting it with some water and depositing that. And the blends that these make are incredible. When they mix with the pinks, they form different shades of purple from lavender to a deep purple. I'll take some more of that orange and start making my outline as well as the deeper pinks. And I go and I just create that outline to that flamingo shape. I'll take a little more of the cherry blossom because I want to incorporate a little more pink into my illustration. I still like to have white of the paper showing through, so I'll put this pink, layer it on top of existing pigments that are down. I like to shade the legs a little, so I add a little more orange and a little more cherry blossom onto the legs, particularly up top and on the left hand side. Then I'll take a little more of that yellow and I'll go in there and add that to the white areas of our bird. And then I'll add a few areas to the legs and this makes for a lot of interest. Now I don't have a black in this palette, but that's okay because I mix tree bark brown with some of this midnight blue and I get this beautiful deep color. I take that and I use that for the beak. So I'm painting wet on dry, so I have a lot of control. And I just wanna color in parts of the beak. I don't wanna make it all one color. I like those little white areas shining through. After I carve out my shape, I'll let it completely dry. Then I'll come back and with that 
dark color, I'll re-wet it and make that eye. It's very important that that face be dry before I do that step. I'm taking a little more of the cherry blossom, a little more of the saffron and some vivid red and just making the outline here of the bird. Any areas that faded or bled, I just wanna work on that shape. I'm taking a little more saffron as well. I'm gonna let that completely dry and then I'll come and do the background. And because I'm using so much water for the background, I don't want it to just squeeze it out from my brush. I just dip it in water. And then I make like a little halo around the flamingo of wet paper, leaving a little gap of dry paper in between. And then I add my ocean blue and I'll go all the way around the flamingo, that ocean blue. So it's more intense, closest to the bird and it fades as it goes away from the bird. I'll do this all the way around the head, the tail, the neck, and the legs. I'll blend it out with some water just to make those edges nice and soft, but this really makes the flamingo pop. I'll let this dry and then we'll take a look at our finished pieces. So here we have our flamingo completed and it looks beautiful. Here's the other image where we reverse the template and then here's a third image that I did where I played around with the template just to change the shape of the head. Aren't those colors fantastic? Please be sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you found this workshop useful, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for joining me.